So today I'm going to talk about the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus, which is a Gen 4 NVMe SSD uh, that is supposed to offer a lot of performance for a reasonable price. It is also one of the very rare options out there that goes up to eight terabytes in capacity, which is even more impressive when you consider it's a TLC drive and not a QLC one. Now, I've managed to get my hands on a two terabyte version, so let's see how it performs and how it holds up uh, when compared to about 20 other Gen 4 SSDs that I've tested so far. Let's go. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime Series power supplies. These top quality power supplies are very efficient, they're whisper quiet, extremely reliable, and my go-to choice for most of my test rigs and builds around here. And to make the deal even sweeter, Seasonic wraps it all up in a cozy 12-year-long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. When it comes to the Rocket 4 Plus NVMe, uh, you can either buy just the SSD or you can get it in a bundle with a heatsink included. And since every fast Gen 4 SSD will overheat if you don't cool it, uh, adding some sort of a heatsink is always recommended. If your motherboard comes with a heatsink, you don't really need to buy it, but if for some reason or other yours doesn't have it, or if you're buying an SSD for your PlayStation 5, uh, it is actually good to know that the bundle with the heatsink will usually cost you only about $10. More. A lot of other brands uh, charge a big fat premium for their branded heatsinks, so it is really refreshing to see that Sabrent isn't doing that. Now, technically speaking, it's a pretty straightforward SSD. It's a typical M.2 2280 model, so it fits the majority of desktops, uh, laptops, and consoles, but it won't fit in your Steam Deck. Uh, they're using the Fison E18 controller that is found in the majority of Gen 4 SSDs, and they're combining it with a DRAM cache and some TLC flash chips, which is, again, a typical way to put together an SSD. There's not that much in terms of features. Uh, technically, this controller supports uh, hardware encryption, uh, but Sabrin doesn't seem to mention it anywhere. So if that is really important to you, I would go for a brand that openly supports it. It also has an endurance rating of 700 terabytes written per terabyte capacity, and it comes with a five-year-long warranty if you register your drive. So again, this is all pretty typical. I would say that the most interesting thing about this SSD uh, are the capacity options. So you can choose uh, between a 500 gig, one terabyte, two terabyte, four terabyte, as well as eight terabyte models, which is very unique. But let's talk performance. So the PC Mark 10 Quick Benchmark uh, contains various tests that replicate all those little light tasks that we do with our PCs on a daily basis. So those are the things like working with documents, uh, working with photos, for example, but also loading your games. So this is a very good benchmark for anyone that wants to uh, add a second or an extra SSD to their systems for those very simple tasks. And the Rocket 4 Plus looks pretty good here here, taking a spot close to the top of the chart. The SN770 is the odd one out since it doesn't use DRAM and it actually benefits greatly from a high-end DDR5 test rig that I used to test all my SSDs. But it's not far behind some other high-end drives like the SN850, KC3000 and Corsair MP600 Pro. It is also ahead of the Firecuda 530 and the Samsung 980 Pro as well as its predecessor, the Rocket for. Now, another drive to keep an eye on here uh, is the Crucial P5 Plus, uh, which is just ahead in this test and is generally one of the cheapest Gen 4 drives on the market. Now, the full PC Mark 10 suite uh, is a more intense test that is meant to replicate uh, more serious and more active use of your system and of the drive itself. So this is a very good test uh, if you plan to use this drive as your main drive or if you plan to run some applications that are very heavy on the SSD. And here the Sabrin drops to roughly the middle of the graph, but it's still an upgrade over the older Rocket 4. Now, the entire top half is actually pretty competitive with the SN770 and the KC3000 standing out, but the 10 or so drives behind them are all pretty close together. The PC Mark 10 consistency test is usually where cheaper drives start to struggle uh, because this is a very extreme, very long stress test that kind of pushes a drive to its 
complete limits. Uh, so it's not that relevant for most of you, but it's still a great test to see how an SSD performs when really stressed for a really long period of time. And here the Rocket 4 Plus uh, goes up a few spaces again, landing right behind the Crucial P5 Plus and the WD Black SN850, while still being an upgrade over the old Rocket 4 drive. And this is a result of Sabrin sticking to TLC memory instead of costing down to QLC, because QLC drives are usually found at the bottom of this graph. Still, I wouldn't really call this the most logical SSD choice for a workstation setup, but it's not a bad result at all. Pure sequential speeds are not something that I personally believe are that important. Uh, most brands love them for marketing purposes, uh, but they're not that relevant for an actual day-to-day -day performance. Uh, even when you're looking for an SSD for your PlayStation, for example, uh, things like uh, access time and latency are way more important than the actual straight up speed. Still, Sony does have a minimum read speed requirement. I personally think that it's not necessary to focus on it that much, but if you are looking for an SSD for your PlayStation, I do think it's wise to at least match the required spec. With a score of 67 megabytes per second, the Rocket 4 Plus meets the requirement just fine. It hits the limit of the Gen 4 port along with 8 or so other drives, and it is a bit ahead of the crucial P5 Plus. So it will be a great choice for your PlayStation 5. Now, sequential write performance looks excellent as well, standing at 6500 megabytes per second. But you do have to use a heatsink, as I've said before, because all Gen 4 SSDs get hot, and this Rocket for Plus is no exception. Uh, if all you do is some very light tasks, you might be fine without it, uh, but once you really start stressing the drive, or if you run it somewhere where it cannot get rid of all the heat, like in a PlayStation 5 for example, the temperature can easily get a lot higher, at which point the performance will drop. So if you have a motherboard with an SSD heatsink, it will be completely fine. Uh, but if you don't, or you plan to use this in a PlayStation 5, you should get the bundle with a heatsink included, which should cost you only about $10 more. If it costs more than that in your region, uh, grabbing a third-party heatsink from Amazon will save you a couple of dollars or more. I will leave a few suggestions in the description down below. When we look at the prices in the EU, or in the Netherlands to be more precise, the 1TB model will cost you around 170 euros, and the 2TB model uh, will cost you about 340 euros, which is a bit tricky because the Crucial P5 Plus is currently at 110 euros for 1TB or 230 euros for 2 terabytes. And when you have two drives that offer pretty similar performance, it is very hard to recommend paying 60 to 90 euros more just to get the save print. And it's a very similar story with the SN850, which is actually faster in most benchmarks while being considerably cheaper at the moment. When we look at the prices in the US, the 1TB Rocket 4 Plus looks a bit better, uh, but the 2TB version is just way too expensive, especially when the P5 Plus is about 230 and the SN850 around $240. But most competitors simply don't offer 4 or even 8 terabyte capacities, and the ones that do uh, mostly offer QLC drives. So $699 for a 4 terabyte version isn't cheap, but it's not that bad compared to the Firecuda 530 or Corsair MP600 Pro LPX, which do cost a lot more. And it is also a much better product than the cheaper alternatives like the WD Black SN750 or a Rocket Q4. If you somehow have 1500 plus dollars to spare on an 8TB SSD, uh, it is important to know that the 8TB version will be a bit slower due to its design, but it will still outperform the QLC drives. Anyway, prices vary per region and they can and also will change over time, so when you do decide to buy an SSD, uh, don't forget to look at the current pricing in your region. Now, Sabrent did manage to price down their drives in the past, so I really do hope uh, that they will do this again, because overall, this is a very good Gen 4 SSD with a solid all-around performance, and it is also very interesting for people that want a high-performance drive that is larger than 2 terabytes. So if they do decide to price it a bit more aggressively, so it lands at or just below the Crucial P5+, Plus, it would definitely be worth recommending, but not just yet. 
Now, that is all I have for today. Uh, if you like this video, please do consider subscribing to this channel so you never miss an upload. Uh, and if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions on which SSD I should look at next, please do leave a comment down below. I really do enjoy uh, reading them all. So thank you all for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.